Alright folks, here we are outside the gates of Karazhan. I'm gonna go ahead and record the first few bosses, up, probably up to Nightbane, if I can, if I remember right. I think my warlock here is uh, attuned to Nightbane. So hopefully I can do that fight and show it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, Attunement the Huntsman here. I already have the mount, but maybe it'll drop and you can see it drop. Um, I know, uh, I kind of wish I would bring people with me to do some of these raids because I've been doing heroic fire, uh, 25 man firelands and I've had the mount drop for me, both mounts dropped for me in the past three weeks in there. I think at least once or twice. So, um, I kind of wish, uh, that, uh, you know, somebody else could get them because I don't need them anymore. Big deal. Now there's two ways to go. There's a back way here, up the stairs, or there's the other way around there. You can go either way. I'm gonna go the back way today <clears throat> to go up to the next uh, fight, which is Moros. The only thing about going this way is you uh, you kind of skip the ballroom and come around the back entrance here, where Moros is. So, here we are into the, come into the main chamber room, there's a scullery here, like the kitchen. Come here to the banquet hall where Maros is. Now this fight was fun in Burning Crusade. When me and my, uh, my, uh, my own personal guild were running this, it used to be a tough fight for us because you get your randoms here. Uh, his four ads that were with him. So like a warrior, paladin, healer, you know. <clears throat> different classes and they would always be randomized so you'd have to have certain types of CC like we always try to have at least one or two priests to do like a shackle on dead on them now this is before you know death knights and all that so but we're, we're gonna one shot him right here yeah. and they'll go down pretty quick here comes the ads now it's all right Maros's pocket watch. I remember that. All the tanks in the guild wanted that. They would actually fight over that that trinket. We weren't really using uh, DKP. We were using more of like a master looter type thing. We would uh, just have people roll, and whoever got the highest roll would get the trinket. Um, you know, DKP was something the, your higher ranked guilds would use. Because they had so many raiders, we were, you know, lucky. Luckily, lucky if we had seven or eight core raiders, and then um, it just uh, we would find other friends to come in and pug the rest. And I think out of that, we'd always have to pug a healer because we didn't really have uh, maybe but one, if two, we were lucky uh, core raid healers and one or two tanks so we're usually always pugging a tank I did play multiple classes during Burning Crusade <clears throat> I played a hunter a mage a warlock I leveled a druid to tank for us in here whenever we needed one and he wasn't the, the best tank there goes Maiden of Virtue right there she's down nice little transmog mace there she used to be a pretty rough fight for spellcasters and you did not want to put a paladin tank on her because um, she does a consecration that uh, actually silences whoever's standing in it. So all casters, anybody who used mana or spells had to stay away from that. And a paladin you know, tank would be silenced the entire time so we literally couldn't do anything. So we always tried to have a, uh, a warrior tank for that fight. It's pretty pretty easy you know raid now this is one of my all-time favorite raids it's such a big place but it's I don't know it's just the zone I mean listen to the music I mean it reminds it's just a perfect Halloween type raid you know and I'm a big f fan of Halloween horror and just this this place is like a haunted you know a haunted tower mage tower 
And if you don't know the lore, Karazhan is actually the home of Medivh, the home of his father, Shade of, uh, of Iran, who's a boss in here. His actual name is Iran, but in here you got a boss of Shade of the Iran. Um, you got some other cool bosses in here. Um, I like to watch uh, uh, Nobble's uh, lore videos, and he hasn't really touched on Karazhan a whole lot. I haven't seen one anyways, and I was kind of hoping he would do one, like on the raid itself. And like This is Opera here. We're going to see what uh, Opera event we're going to get. <clears throat> it could be a big bad wolf, the crone, which is uh, like um, Wizard of Oz. And yeah, Romeo and Julianne, or whatever their name was. Of the human soul as we join a lost, lonely girl trying desperately with the help of her loyal companion. Oh, it's the Wizard of Oz, the crone here. Um, but I'm under, I'm, I've been doing a little bit of thinking about Karazhan, and you know, uh, Novel hasn't really covered like Prince Malkazar, who's the final boss, and he's part of the Burning Legion, he's one of the demons. Um, we kill him, but supposedly when you kill a demon, in our world, their soul goes back to the nether. But because we have a dragon in this raid called Nether Spike, and when you get to the top of the tower to him, it says somewhere in the Twisting Nether or something like that is where you zone into. So I think we actually killed Prince Malkazar in the nether. So. It's an interesting, uh, some lore with this, you know. Medivh's one of my favorite lore characters along with Gul'dan. Of course, I play a warlock, so he is. Um, I love, um, I first part started playing Warcraft during the first one. Orcs versus humans. Uh, I played the demo with a cousin of mine back in, like, 1994 or something like that. And then, uh, when I finally got my own computer... At my house, uh, I, could really use a heart, I, uh, I that was the first game I bought, and I played all the way through it, and it was just a, a wonderful game, loved it, and that's when my love of Warcraft started, didn't really play, um, didn't really play a lot of Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3, now I wish I have, I wish I had played it, because seeing some of the Warcraft 3 stuff, you know, it's real looks real awesome. I think it's, it's been out for 15 years or 20 years or whatever it's been now. Not 20 years, but 15 years. <clears throat> Maybe 17 years. Something like that. But I think I'm going to get it. I mean, it's pretty cheap now. But I want to get it and play through it because I love the Warcraft lore. Uh, Warcraft's got some of my favorite um, stories. I'm looking forward to the movie that's coming out next year. A lot of people are going to be confused by that because it actually goes back to the first war, which is well before World of Warcraft, with King Lane and Black Hand and, you know, Orgrim Doomhammer and all them. Because um, your first uh, Warcraft game, that's what it covers. You know, Black Hand and Orgrim Doomhammer, and you kill Medivh and Garona. You hunt them down in these caves. And <clears throat> um, but here we are headed now to Nightbane. So we'll get over here to Nightbane. And the only reason I'm not going to do a full run-through of Karazhan today is because I have uh, a hard time getting through chess. Like it's, you know, it's an all-about luck type of thing. I've moved my pieces around. Usually i got to pull a friend in just to help me get past it most of the time. Um, yep, here we go. It's the Black and Urn. You see it right here? We will summon Nightbane. A lot of people don't, haven't got to see this fight. I'm going to put my Infernal on a passive here. Summon Nightbane and look up over the ledge here. He should fly up. There he is. Good old Nightbane. This was a tough fight back in the day. He puts these fiery fissures on the ground. That will burn you to a crisp. You stay in it too long, you're, you're dead. You don't have long to move out of it. Um, and then he goes into another phase where he takes flight and he shoots ads down. You have to do best you can AOE and getting the ads down as quick as possible. Um, this will probably be an easy fight. We'll probably one shot him. Yep. Here he 
he goes, he takes flight, goes into the next phase. He's gonna shoot down the ads now. Rain of bones, here they are. These things would just destroy a healer. And you did not want to get hit by that rain of bones, because that would kill you. But now it's not so much of a big deal. See there, Searing Cinders, 5,500 fire damage over 18 seconds. Now, Burning Crusade, you were lucky if you had uh, 15,000 health. I mean, you were lucky. Tanks only had like 20 to 30. <coughs> so, that right there would just would annihilate you. Just going to wait for him to, he'll come down here in a few. We used to try to keep the ads spread out. We'd have here and then part of the group here and then part of the group on the other side of the platform here. You didn't have a... That's what made this fight so hard is you didn't have a lot of room to move. So when he started throwing those fissures down, like, um, you know, it would... Uh, it, you couldn't move. So... And once it filled up the platform here, like this right here was a big one, <laughs> it would reduce your hit chance by 30%. And I think back in the day, hit was 25% in Burning Crusade. So you couldn't hit with all, at all. You couldn't touch them. Like, you had zero hit rating. So it would just kill the DPS. Nice little transmog piece. I'll show that in the window here. Um, Robe of the Elder Scribes was a wonderful robe you know if you didn't have any tear gear or anything I've seen a lot of mages wear that back in Burning Crusade um, but I don't really need it I think I already have it in my uh, transmog sets but uh, alright that's going to be it for this video I just wanted to come in here and run the first little section of Karazhan and show everybody Nightbane this is Nightbane it's a fiery skeletal dragon so now everybody gets a look at that. I haven't seen a lot of videos covering Nightbane, but this one has it in it. So if, like I said, if you like my videos, please subscribe, like, and comment. Maybe leave me uh, something you like, a comment on something you'd like to see me attempt or do. Um, and again, uh, thanks for watching.